knife painting in oils uh, using impasto medium. You can make your own impasto medium with liquid original and whiting or ground chalk and even talcum powder mixed with liquid original or any binding agent, any sort of oil will do it. The advantage of making your own is you can control the viscosity or the thickness of the material and that in turn allows you to build up thicker layers. The key I think to knife painting is simplicity, to simplify the subject as much as possible, to simplify shapes, to simplify the zones in a landscape, perhaps into near, mid-distance and far, um, using different tones. The other quality that uh, knife painting has, of course, is the partly three-dimensional, that you build up the paint in layers. So I've started this image uh, of um, this bridge on the island of Skye, with this rather dramatic river underneath it, in um, just hard, a hard pencil, like an H or an HB, and I've just drawn, finding the middle of the image, finding the apex of the bridge in the centre of the image, and then using alignment, horizontal alignment, and some vertical alignment to give position. But what I've changed about it from the photograph is the vertical height that I've made this, made these mountains taller, made everything a little bit more vertical, because I've changed from a longer landscape format into a more squashed, um, upright uh, rectangle. But that's, that's, that's um, art, isn't it? That's painting. So I'm using liquid oleopasto, which is suitable for both water-soluble and uh, conventional oils. And it's a very reliable um, impasto medium in that it doesn't change the colour that you're mixing. So you can see the example here of this on the, on the palette. This doesn't have any pigment with it, so it won't make the colour lighter, for example. I've got ultramarine, thalo blue, cerulean blue, a bit more ultramarine, cadmium red, crimson, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow and white. And I'm going to have a go at making a grey using ultramarine and white. Oh, I'm looking at the sky, but the sky's got quite a lot of grey in it, so that's ultramarine and white. And just give that a good stir with the knife. I favour this sort of smaller cantilevered handled knife with a nice diamond point, small, which is good for making curving shapes. The larger knife, the larger palette knife, like this, is good for large areas, but it's not so good for working into, it's good for straight edges as well. It's not so great for curves, and clouds have curves. So if I add a little bit of ochre to that colour, I'm hoping to make it a little bit greyer. A little bit greyer, and possibly a very small amount of crimson to that, to make the grey slightly warmer. So I've got, I feel, there a colour grey, which I just scrape off the palette. And then I take some of the bulking agent, and that just thickens the paint up without changing the tone or the colour. This makes it a bit thicker. So I need to make, I think I need to make something a bit darker than that. So I'm going to make another one that's a little bit darker. That's got more ultramarine, a little bit more ochre, some crimson. Give this a good stir. And a little bit less white this time. Titanium white can be very dense. Uh, dense and with a strong covering power. That's another colour grey. I'm going to take some little bit of bulking agent and add it to that. So you can see how that's thickened up the paint. So I may choose to use different knives for this. And I've got several that are the same size. Um, just because it's quicker, but I've also got this um, bit of kitchen roll taped to the board where I can clean the knife more easily than I could wipe it. I just clean it much more quickly there if I need to. So if I'm looking to put the colour, pick up the colour, put it on the back of the knife like that, and bring it, bring it off there to create the edges of Clyde. So First thing I'm going to do is sort of try and divide up this rather great dark sky into 
big simple masses of grey, perhaps slightly bluer that should be. Let's go with another knife and a lighter mixture. So that's got the lighter mixture. I'm going to drag that into the slightly darker mixture, pick that up and blend these a little bit on the surface. And go lighter there. So there's another lot of edges here. Then here and here there is a darker grey lower down. So this is quite a, a threatening sky. Right down to the edge of the mountain with that mark. So I can make quite an, a good edge just by drawing that along with the knife. And I can start with an impression of these greys here. This is the first layer with the knife, and so I'm not building it up too heavily, because that could create problems later on if I have a thick layer to build up on. So grey, again, this is quite a blue-grey in here. You've got to put lots of colour on the board I think, and it is better on a board than on a canvas, because it's the only way to start the painting, is to transfer um, dead series of colours. So that may not look like very much, but there's some from that lighter grey through here possibly, making the edge of this distant mountain. I'm going to, going to adapt this colour to make it bluer and put a little more cold blue in it, fallow blue, so it becomes much more of a blue grey. And try that on top of here, mix it in a little bit on that surface. Mix in this blue grey in here with the darker grey. Put the blue grey down here. Again, I'm going to try and make this blue grey use it to paint the edge of the mountain. If you are using liquid oleo pastel, Use it in a well ventilated space because it is it does have quite a strong odour which you might react to a bit. So this is more blue grey, that, that's where the mountain sort of dissolves into the cloud. So the sky is, is really quite tonal. Mix that a little more with the polio pastel. Try and combine those elements. There's another bit of bluer sky in the middle here, so if I switch that to a blue, colder blue, it's much easier to clean the, the knife uh, than it is compared to, say, cleaning the brush. So that looks a little bit bluer to my eye and that's why I'm using turning the wrist. So to make these curving shapes you've got to turn your wrist around the shapes in the sky. So I'm going to come to a stronger blue, more thallow, that's quite cold, a little bit of white and some impasto medium. There is just a hint of rather cold blue in this gap in the clouds here. Um, so this canvas was primed with acrylic primer, which has sealed the surface a bit. It's not, it's not entirely necessary to have a really well primed canvas for knife painting, because <coughs> the, the amount of paint being used is significantly more, significantly more than you might use with a brush. 
least it is when you when you get the bulking agent into the mix. So crimson plus ultramarine. Just looking at these variations in the blue greys, there's a little hint of um, more ultramarine type grey. Mix that up a little bit more. Mix that in a little bit more. So that that is. I've got these lighter areas to paint, but I haven't painted them yet. And but I'd like to try and simplify this as much as possible. So that, that means I might just leave the sky for a moment. That should be dark there. There's little bits of dark there. There's bits, bits, bits of darker colour further away. And there. Darker grey and fairly complex Clyde shapes that are a little bit harder to do. So I'm looking at the, I've come down the image, that's a bit of a simplification so far, but I'll leave it alone. So I'd rather try and develop more of the image than leave um, you know, the whole thing unpainted and finish that. I think that can lead to an imbalance, imbalance in the image from the early stages of painting. So I see this violety colour, quite a dark violet colour in this mountain here, this hill in the foreground. It's got quite, quite a rugged edge, but it's more or less a flat colour. So I'm using, turning the wrist, turning the knife to drag it into the profile of the hillside. And I'll come along here. So this is a little bit nearer, but it's still a long way off than compared to the far hills. At the moment I'm just going to make that all the same. The nature is a little bit different, it's not always all the same. That comes down to there, and that's where I'm using the drawing as well as a guide. Something like that. That's the edge of um, a bracken moor. Um, it's kind of rusty coloured moor. And that same colour is exists exists over here because the light is sort of coming from the left. So it's, I'm changing the direction on the knife all the while to catch the different angles on the mount in these hills. And that's partially in shadow. So the light coming from the on that on that on that way. Still some shapes of, of shadow in there. Slightly lighter colour further away, just um, adapting these colours. And so this is a little bit paler, it's still very craggy, which is what appealed to me about this subject. That it's the mountains, the hills are, the rocks are quite steep and craggy, jagged edged. So I'm looking for anywhere else that I can think of the same colour exists and the colours do change as I come down here. So that's, that's, maybe this has got some of that grey in it, but it's mostly um, the job for a longer knife. So that's a longer knife, getting the colour on the back of the knife and seeing if I can make some longer shapes coming down this hillside. That's just, just, you know, that's just a little indication of what I might do there with that. Um, different greys then, so if I have a, adapt that grey that I had here by adding yellow ochre for the bridge initially. So I use that with the rest of the bulking agent. A little bit of blue. See if I can make a, an ochre grey that might work for the bridge. So this parapet here. The bridge is quite a central feature, so I need to get an idea of what that's going to look like with this long knife. And that, the long knife is better for edges, long edges or linear marks. It's going to you know, lighten, lighten it a little bit, put a little bit of light in it. So all of that, that edge is, is um, 
almost straight up to the apex of the bridge and then coming away from the apex on the other side using the knife something like that so curving shapes are the biggest challenge in knife painting and getting the knife to go around circular curving shapes is so again I've loaded it up on that side of the um, Leg it up on the other side and just turn the turn the knife. So there I'm picking up on the surface of the board. So I am relying a bit on the drawing for this to place that shape. The other arches, so that arch is coming around here, something like that. I haven't put any shadows in this yet, but you can see that, that it is possible with the knife to, to make quite um, smooth curves, to, to make curving shapes that. Little accidents occur with a knife all the time. When I drag that paint over there, I pick up the texture of the brushwork in the, the priming, and that that is a bit like when well, it gives a texture. It could be work for stony stone sort of texture, this sort of drag mark. So these buttresses are different, and I want to make them different. And then the bridge comes over here, and that's. A little bit different. So I've got some cooler areas in, I've got some shadow in, the, I've got some Clyde rather. Um, this is the early stages of making this image and I'm trying to paint um, everywhere really in the image, not favour anywhere particularly. So if I come down the edge of the riverbank here, there's, there are stones here but I just want to be able to see that edge and see the edge uh, where, the, where the river has flooded to on this side somewhere in there a lot of the rest of this is in, in the opposite colour so I've got blue and I've got violet and I've got deeper blue and I've got blue greys and this is where the, the knife is so much easier to work with than a brush because you can get the knife pretty much 100% clean with just a few wipes on the piece of kitchen roll. A bit more of this. I'm going to use. I'm not going to use more of this than than colour. And that's got saving on colour. Put that on for a minute. Yellow ochre and crimson make a terracotta. So this is the orange, which is the sort of opposite colour in this uh, subject, the opposite colour to purple and blue. The other one has been swamped by the crimson. A little bit of white in there, not too much. Um, yeah, that's, that's better. I'm going to put a little bit of cadmium yellow in there to make that a copper colour. And so there is this copper colour which I suppose is winter grass and winter bracken. Um, and there are degrees of this, so where to place it? I'm going to try a little bit of here. It's not quite the right colour. I'm going to try a little bit of this colour. It's got a little bit more warmth there, but this would do as a first layer. In this um, mid distance, there is something like this in here. Uh, trees or bushes in front of the river here. There's a copper, this, this terracotta colour, ochre terracotta colour exists through here. And this is why I'm going to have to interpret the landscape a little bit and make this less warm further away. Let's see if I can put that down. Make this edge. Um, yeah, which is quite 
quite jagged. There are various trees in there. Um, there's another colour in the distance, a different, a different version of that, slightly different up here. I'll drag that into the shadows. Still got a lot of white spaces on here and I'd like to try and get rid of those white spaces and the gaps on the um, hillside. A little bit of green mixed with the terracotta colour, so that greeny colour kind of mixes on the surface with the palette knife to make this edge of the middle distance, which is rather uneven, through here. Greeny colour with that. So mixing on the surface. and joining into the slightly brighter zone in front. So I would work on this a little bit further. Generally the colours that are nearer are going to be warmer um, and that's partly true in the picture but it's, it's going to work for the painting as well, so that's another consideration. If I put a little bit more crimson in this mixture, then I'm going to use a slightly hotter colour a bit nearer. And even through here, this has just got a little bit more warmth in it. It's got a lot more warmth in it. Um, on these little touches of this hotter colour, nearer and nearer through here. Bit of ochre, lost the ochre altogether. Well, ochre. And I'll need that for this colour in the river, which I'd like to just put a little indication of in. So that's the ochre colour I want it there. I need to put a little bit of green with this in it. All of this has got some ochre ground. And if I drag some green into that into wet, I'll get the effect I want. That, that just needs a little bit more work in there. The river, I use the longer knife for that, just wipe it off. So a palette knife is made of should be made of hardened steel. And the, the steel tapers, so that's very springy. And being harder steel or spring steel, it shouldn't snap or break easily. But it will, of course, if you push it far enough, it will break. Um, so I'm going to mix up a blue colour and add yellow ochre to that and make a sort of yellow green mixture, something like that. And that's the colour that I think is in the in some of this river through here, it's sort of slightly greenish water. And that's an important bit of the composition in this subject. That, that river just sort of goes through there. Goes down into this foreground. So it's, this is pretty crude. It's all rather general. I'm going to try and put a description of the water, which is flowing quite quickly through here. And this is based on the sky colour. So the, the, the water is flowing over rocks, and the rocks uh, cause the water to um, foam. So there's foaming water there. I'd like to come back to put white onto this later. So this is just a an idea of the textures in the flowing water. And if I use a bit more liquid there, a tiny bit of crimson in the water to bring up, make it a bit warmer forwards here and darker. So that's a little bit more crimson in the green. Some more of that um, olive pasto. And I'm looking to use this sort of grey green colour. 
So we give an impression of the, the water coming forwards into the landscape, or coming forwards into the painting. edge of this parapet there. Yeah. That's still quite thin, that mixture. Um, but it's building up layers because that will resist um, it will resist colour you know, other layers put on top of that will be affected or the lumps and bumps that are created this time in the first stages will be dry by the next time and that affects the way the colour sits on top. And that's part of the character of a knife painting is this building up of layers of texture. There is a sort of shadow cast in the river by the bridge which is a significant part of the um, composition in the foreground. So that's just a darker blue grey. So there's quite a lot of the painting that isn't, um, isn't finished, isn't done. But it's a beginning where I felt I got some, some sort of description almost everywhere in the image. And it is a work in progress. And for, a, for an initial study, I feel that's a good approach to think of the whole of the picture rectangle at this stage.